Hello, and thank you for viewing our presentation on proposed final rules for Goliath grouper. This presentation will cover some background information on Goliath biology and management, present our proposed final rules for the upcoming commission meeting on March 2nd and 3rd, and provide information on next steps, where to learn more, and how you can provide feedback on this topic. So why are we here? Commissioners have previously expressed interest in restoring access to the Goliath fishery as it rebuilds. Proposed rules were presented at the October 2021 commission meeting, where commissioners approved the proposal and directed staff to explore specific changes before returning for a final rule. This final rule will come forward at the commission meeting on March 2nd and 3rd. Staff have updated the proposal based on this direction and are seeking public feedback to provide for commissioners at the March commission meeting on final rules for a limited, highly regulated harvest of Goliath grouper. Goliath abundance is increasing in Florida, and this positive trend is expected to continue. Because of their biology and behavior, which I'll discuss more in a minute, Goliath management requires a different approach. Thus, in 2018, the Commission adopted alternative goals and metrics to monitor and better evaluate Goliath's relative stock status. I'll come back to these metrics later in the presentation. FWC's management philosophy for Goliath is multifaceted. The agency recognizes Goliath's role in the ecosystem as a large, important predator that helps to maintain healthy reef ecosystems. The agency also understands that there are diverse stakeholder values for Goliath and that management should take this into account while also promoting continued population rebuilding. Currently, access is provided to anglers through catch and release fishing and to recreational divers through sightseeing opportunities. Historically, Goliath ranged from Florida to Brazil throughout the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean with seasonal movements up the U.S. Atlantic coast. Currently, they are most common in Florida with the greatest abundance in South Florida. Goliath are managed in state waters by FWC and in federal waters by the Gulf and South Atlantic councils. There are a number of factors about Goliath's life history that makes them susceptible to overfishing, including the fact that they are, gather at predictable locations and in areas where fishermen like to fish, making them easy to target and catch. Prior to 1983, there weren't any regulatory measures specific to Goliath in state or federal waters. And in the absence of regulations, Goliath population began declining in the 1950s and through the 1980s. This was partly because they were a popular fishing target, but also because their juvenile habitat, mangroves, began to decline. In 1990, fishery managers responded to this decline in Goliath by closing harvest in both state and federal waters. Fishery managers, researchers, and fishermen continue to observe increasing numbers of Goliath in Florida. Scientists have attempted to quantify the rebuilding progress since the closure with three federal stock assessments in 2004, 2010, and 2016. However, all of these assessments were rejected for use in management by independent expert reviewers, partly because of unknowns in life history, uncertainty about their maximum age, uncertainty about historical landings and no landings data since the 1980s, and lack of information about the stock outside the southeastern U.S. Even though the population could not be assessed using traditional stock assessment methods, rebuilding progress has been documented in other ways. In 2006, NOAA Fisheries removed Goliath from their Species of Special Concern list when a status report showed signs of increases in abundance and that Goliath were reestablishing themselves in their historic range. Goliath have never been listed under the Endangered Species Act. In 2018, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, an independent organization, changed their listing of Goliath from critically endangered to vulnerable on their red list of threatened species. Due to the difficulties mentioned earlier, FWC developed alternative metrics and goals in 2018 to monitor the population status, with one of these metrics being indices of abundance, which has been shown to be increasing. These are the five metrics FWC uses to monitor the Goliath population status. The first metric is relative indices of abundance. Our goal is long-term stability or increase in juvenile and adult abundance. The second metric is abundance on natural reefs with a goal of increasing adult density on this habitat. The third metric is genetic diversity with the goal of increasing genetic diversity with a low level of inbreeding. The fourth metric is population size. The goal here is increased genetic effective population size for both the Atlantic and Gulf stocks. And the fifth metric is population age structure with a goal of expanded presence in older age classes. The timeframes for these metrics vary based on their data sources, some of which are available annually and some data require longer timeframes. 
FWC staff have done extensive stakeholder engagement to understand perspectives and desires for Goliath management, including public workshops throughout the state and receiving over 8,000 comments since 2017. What we have determined is that opinions on Goliath are strongly held and highly variable. Feedback could be categorized into those that support harvest and those that do not. The main reasons why they support those views are listed in these two columns. We have reviewed all of these comments and took these into account throughout the rulemaking process. Staff have considered a variety of factors when developing a final rule. This proposal incorporates commission direction, stakeholder input, Goliath biology, and FWC's management philosophy. Here is a summary of the proposed final rules for a limited, highly regulated harvest that would provide additional access while allowing population rebuilding to continue. New or updated items are indicated by the WAM throughout the presentation, and on subsequent slides, I will go into more specifics for each. Staff are proposing to allow harvest of 200 fish per year with one fish per person with permit issued via lottery and differing costs for residents and non-residents. There will be a specific season, allowable gear, and slot limit for harvest. There would also be specific areas closed to harvest along with post-harvest requirements and gear restrictions for known spawning aggregation sites. If this rule is approved in early 2022, the first year of harvest could be spring of 2023. More specifically on harvest limits, we are recommending a maximum of 200 fish per year. The harvest must be limited to prevent overfishing and maintain progress towards rebuilding. Scientists at FWRI have advised that 200 goliath per year is not expected to impact population rebuilding. Rebuilding strategies for other species typically allow some level of harvest, such as can be seen with red snapper. Also, we have coordinated with Everglades National Park, and they have requested that the number taken from the park be limited to a maximum of 50 fish. Thus, of the 200 fish available for harvest each year, only up to 50 of those could be taken from within the park. We were also proposing a one fish per person bag limit per year during the open season. This will be available for recreational harvest only, and anglers would be required to have a Goliath harvest permit and tag that would be obtained via a random draw lottery. Those who are exempt from possessing a recreational fishing license would still be required to possess a permit and tag in order to participate in this harvest opportunity. Let's get into more details about the lottery. Harvest opportunities would be available through the issuance of special use permits awarded through a random draw lottery. This will be similar to the system that currently exists for the alligator harvest program. To participate, anglers will be required to complete an application during a 15 day application period that would occur between October 1 and November 30th of each year. There would be two permit categories, one that allows harvest from within Everglades National Park and the other that does not. This will ensure that we will not go over the desired maximum of 50 Goliath from the park. The fee to apply is $10 and applicants could apply for one or both of these categories of permit. There's a limit of one permit and tag per person per year, and it is non-transferable. If someone has been convicted of a prior wildlife violation within the past five years, they are not eligible to receive a permit and tag. If selected, you would pay a special use permit fee of $150 for Florida residents or $500 for non-residents. This fee offsets the cost of materials and staff time needed to conduct this program. Each participant will receive a physical tag for harvest and a permit package that will be mailed to them. We are recommending the harvest season be March 1st through May 31st of each year. This would avoid Goliath spawning season and would also reduce any additional pressure at a time when Goliath may be susceptible to red tide events, typically in the summer and fall. Only hook and line gear could be used for harvest as Goliath and proposed size range are frequently found in areas where spearing is already not permitted, such as around piers and bridges. We would require use of non-offset, non-stainless steel circle hooks when fishing with natural baits to mitigate post-release mortality for fish that might be caught and then released. The angler must also possess and use a de-hooking device, similar to the current requirements for other reef fish. Staff is recommending that a slot limit be established between 24 and 36 inches total length these slot sized fish would be juveniles, typically found in near shore areas and weighing between five and 32 pounds. The proposed minimum slot size of 24 inches corresponds with the size at which Goliath transitioned from their nursery habitat to a more estuarine environment and prior to maturing and moving offshore. The slot limit prevents harvest of reproductive adults since long-term rebuilding requires fish in older age classes. The slot is also consistent with the FWC goal to increase adult density on natural reefs 
and expand the presence of fish in older age classes. Individuals in this size range have shown the largest increase in abundance in recent years, and there are minimal barotrauma concerns for released fish at this size because these fish are located in shallow water. Goliath in this size range also have lower levels of mercury than adults, and if approved, the FWC would work with the Department of Health on any potential consumption advisories. Staff are proposing a very specific area be closed to harvest. This recognizes the importance of maintaining dive viewing opportunities and ecotourism for Goliath. Harvest would be allowed in all state waters except Martin County, including all of the St. Lucie River and its tributaries, south to the Atlantic coast of the Keys. This is the area of heavy dive ecotourism, and closure to the harvest in this area aligns with FWC's management philosophy of managing Goliath for a diversity of values. At the request of the Park Service, we would also exclude Dry Tortugas National Park from the open harvest area. Harvest would continue to be prohibited in federal waters. This proposal will also have post-harvest requirements. Harvesters must immediately apply the tag provided in the permit package to the harvested fish's lower jawbone. Within 24 hours of harvest, information about their goliath would need to be reported to the FWC licensing system website or by using the Fish Hunt Florida mobile app. This reporting requirement could include information such as the date of harvest, length of the fish, and the location where the fish was caught. A person who harvests a goliath may also be required to submit a biological sample such as a fin clip for genetics. Instructions and all needed equipment would be supplied in their permit package. This information could inform goliath management metrics on both genetic diversity and population size. Everglades National Park may also establish additional reporting requirements for goliath harvested from within the park. Here are our five metrics again. The harvest proposal would provide some useful information for monitoring stock status relative to these metrics. I'm going to focus on this blue column on the right that lists how this limited harvest will affect each metric and goal. For the first metric, the harvest is expected to have minimal impact on the goal of achieving long-term stability or increases in abundance of juvenile and adult goliath. Since only a small number of juveniles would be harvested, the level of harvest is expected to have a negligible impact on overall stock abundance, biomass, or age structure. Since the proposal is limited to juveniles, it will maintain progress toward the second metric of conserving adults on natural reefs and expanding the presence of fish in older age classes, which is the fifth metric. Additional harvest data and biological samples received from harvesters will support the third and fourth metrics by helping to evaluate the genetic diversity and population size. This is a new addition to our proposal. At the October Commission meeting, stakeholders brought up concerns about potential impacts of catch and release fishing on Goliath at spawning aggregations. Commissioners directed staff to explore gear restrictions as a possible method to reduce these potential impacts. The goal of this portion of the rule is to restrict the gear with the most potential to cause harm to Goliath that also specifically targets them so as to not overly impact other fisheries. Staff recommend prohibiting hand lining within 1,000 feet of 11 reported spawning aggregation sites from July through September. Hand lining can be utilized by those lacking the appropriate gear or technique to safely catch a goliath and is more likely to impact goliath health and survival when used inappropriately. Improper hand lining technique could cause damage to the jaw of a fish due to lack of give or stretch when compared to mono, as well as the ability to cleat off a hand line to a vessel to then help pull a goliath from structure. Hand lining also can increase the speed with which a fish can be brought to the surface, amplifying barotrauma concerns. This rule would prohibit possession of hand lines as described unless stowed. Staff worked with divers and goliath researchers to identify these 11 spawning aggregation sites within state waters. These sites include Pipe Barge near the northern end of Martin County, Gulflin 208 Rec, Three Holes, and the MG-111 Warrior Reef Complex near the southern end of Martin County, Tunnels, South Fab, Mike's Reef, Juno High Reef Ledge, and the Anna Cecilia and Mispa between Palm Beach and Jupiter, and then Castor and Bud Bar near Boynton Beach. We are aware of other spawning aggregation sites that exist. However, FWC only has authority for those located within state waters. After some preliminary discussions on the proposed gear restrictions, dive stakeholders have suggested an alternative to reduce impacts of catch and release of goliath at spawning aggregation sites. 
This alternative proposes a higher level of protection, but at fewer locations than staff recommendation. This will provide protection at three sites instead of 11, and no fishing will be permitted within 1,000 feet of these sites. Sites listed have been identified by divers as having the highest density of Goliath during spawning season within state waters and include the MG-111 Warrior Reef Complex, Anna Cecilia and Mispa, Castor and Bud Bar. And these restrictions would also apply from July through September. Staff will also continue ongoing efforts for Goliath that support the Commission's management philosophy that recognizes Goliath's role as a large and important predator that helps the reef ecosystem while also promoting stock rebuilding. Staff will also continue projects that enhance and restore mangrove nursery habitats that are important areas for Goliath. The proposal before you continues to allow catch and release fishing for Goliath and staff will, will work with partners to promote best practices when doing so. It also promotes ecotourism and diving opportunities. All of our long-term data collection efforts we are already doing for Goliath will continue. And we've continued to monitor the status of Goliath relative to our five management metrics. As with any proposed rule, there are some things to consider. A limited, highly regulated harvest while the Goliath population is rebuilding would provide a unique recreational fishing opportunity while accommodating a diverse range of stakeholder values. We have considered all the stakeholder input we have received and tried to address their concerns in our proposal, such as protecting dive viewing opportunities. As the population continues to rebuild, interactions with Goliath will likely increase for anglers and divers. Thus, the proposed harvest will not alleviate negative interactions with fishermen and Goliath that result in lost catches. Any level of sustainable harvest will likely not affect the frequency of these negative interactions. This limited harvest would add to the scientific knowledge for Goliath and aid in the monitoring of the stock status relative to the metrics, but would not result in an accepted formal stock assessment. And lastly, the proposed gear restrictions would prohibit from use at spawning aggregation sites the most potentially harmful gear that specifically targets Goliath, but would still allow catch and release of Goliath at these sites through use of other legal gear. So what are the next steps? Staff will provide comments received on this proposal to commissioners and include a summary of feedback when presenting the final rule at the March 2022 commission meeting. If the final rules are approved by commissioners, they will be effective July 1st, 2022, with gear restrictions in place prior to the upcoming spawning season and a harvest opportunity available in the spring of 2023. You can learn more about Goliath at our website seen here and commission meeting documents will be posted to the commission meeting site closer to the meeting date. There are several ways you can provide feedback on this pro proposal. Submit a comment at our saltwater comments page, you can email or call us. You can email commissioners directly or attend the upcoming commission meeting and provide public feedback in person on March 2nd and 3rd. That concludes our recorded presentation. We thank you for watching.